Now we're going to work on problem 1.5.5 from the textbook. Let A be a non-empty subset of R. Define minus A as follows. Minus A consists of all elements minus X, where X runs in A. And in the first part of the problem, we have to prove that if A is bounded below, then minus A is bounded above. In addition, we have to prove that if A is bounded below, then the infimum of A is equal to the supremum of minus A. In order to understand this set, I'm going to uh, give a simple example. In this example, A is the interval minus 1 to infinity. Obviously, A is bounded um, from below. And then minus A is the set minus infinity to 1. Okay? Then, as you can see, the infimum of A is minus 1, okay? And the supremum of minus A is 1. So, uh, they satisfy this equality. The infimum of A is minus the supremum of minus A, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and work on the first and the sec second part of this problem. Here in part A, we assume that A is bounded below, okay? So since A is bounded below, there exists a real number, alpha in R, such that alpha is less than or equal to x, for all x in A, okay? Now, we're going to take any u that is in minus A. By the definition, then there exists x in A such that u is equal to minus x, okay? And um, because x is greater than x is in A, so x is greater than or equal to alpha. So minus x is less than or equal to minus alpha. And over here, u is equal to minus x. So uh, u is less than or equal to minus alpha, okay? So from here, we see that for any u in minus A, u is less than or equal to minus alpha. Therefore, minus alpha is an upper bound of minus A. So, minus A is bounded from above. Or bounded above. Um, now we are going to work on the second part of the problem. That is, uh, we have to show that if A is bounded below, then the infimum of A is minus the supremum of minus A. Okay? So since um, A is bounded uh, below, the infimum of A exists as a real number. So we can do like this. Let alpha be um, the infimum of A. Okay? And by the completeness axiom, again, alpha is a real number. Uh, let us show that. Alpha is equal to minus supremum of minus A, or equivalently, um, the supremum of minus A is equal to minus alpha. Okay? So, uh, to accomplish this goal, we're going to... Um, uh, proof two things. First of all, we're going to show that alpha is an upper bound of minus A. Okay? In addition, we're going to show that an minus alpha is in fact the least upper bound of minus A. That means uh, if we take any upper bound um, M of minus A, then um, minus alpha has to be less than or equal to M. Okay? Now, uh, let's go ahead and work on the first part. We fix any u that is in minus a. 
then the axis x in A such that u is equal to minus x. Okay? Now, since x is in A and alpha is the infimum of A, alpha must be a lower bound of A. So, um, alpha must be less than or equal to x. Thus, minus x has to be less than or equal to minus alpha. And minus x here is exactly 0. Okay? So we have proved that if we take any 0 in minus a, then 0 is less than or equal to minus alpha. So minus alpha is an upper bound. of minus a. So um, we have just proved that um, if alpha is the infimum of a, then minus alpha is an upper bound of minus a. And our goal now is to prove that, in fact, the supremum of minus a is minus alpha. Okay? So um, let m be any uh, upper bound of minus a. Then we can easily see that this is true. Minus x is less than or equal to m for all x in a by the definition. Okay. Thus, Minus m is less than or equal to x for all x in a. Okay. Since alpha is the infimum of a, what happens? Alpha is the greatest lower bound of a. Now here, minus m satisfies this inequality for all x in a. So minus m is in fact a lower bound of a. And again, alpha is the greatest lower bound of A. We see that minus um, M has to be less than or equal to alpha. This implies that um, minus alpha is less than or equal to M. Okay. So, what have we proved? First of all, we proved that minus alpha is an upper bound of minus a. Then we prove that for any upper bound m of minus a, minus alpha is less than or equal to m. So we already show that minus alpha is in fact the least upper bound of minus a. Okay? Therefore, minus alpha is the least upper bound of a, of minus a. So, um, alpha is in fact minus the supremum of minus a. And um, alpha here is just the infimum of a. So, the infimum of a is equal to minus the supremum of minus a. Okay? So, we have uh, completed the proof of um, the properties in problem 1.5.5. .5 .5.